Hello, early birds and everyone who's joining us for October GP office hours. We'll get started here in just a minute at the top of the hour. Thank you for joining. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining October's GP Office Hours, Unleash Dynamics GP Potential, Five Tools to Help. We'll give everybody just a few minutes to get started. I'm Nicole Brinson. I'll be your host for today's session. Before we get started, I'll just give um, a couple of housekeeping items. If you have any questions or things come up, please feel free to put them in the chat or the Q&A session, or the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen. We'll be monitoring those, both areas for questions. And we've reserved time at the end of today's session to address those questions. Thank everybody for joining us today. Before we get into today's presentation about Unleash the Dynamics GP Potential, five tools to help, we've invited LBMC Technology Solutions Chief Delivery Officer Kenneth Sims to start today's session. Earlier last week, Microsoft announced updates to the modern life cycle for Microsoft Dynamics GP, and we're inviting our, our clients and customers and prospects to have an open discussion about that. Kenneth's here to answer all your questions and give you LBMC's perspective on what you need to do next. Kenneth has been with LBMC Technology Solutions for almost 22 years and joined LBMC with a bachelor's in computer science from Lipscomb University. Recently, Kenneth acquired his retained, retired certification as project management professional. Prior to beginning his consulting career, Kenneth held significant positions such as systems engineer and manager at Electronic Data Systems for almost 12 years, and was the VP of operations at Greystone Group for four years. Kenneth's extensive no technology experience over the past 38 years and knowledge of financial, ERP, and other automation technologies offered by LBMC allow them to advise clients and help them develop strategic roadmaps across the entire enterprise of their business and technology platforms. Ken is intimately involved with many of our GP clients and has extensive knowledge in this area, so we're excited to have Kenneth join us today. Mm -hmm. Kenneth, thank you so much. Thanks, Nicole. I appreciate it. You could have kind of... <clears throat> Held back on that 38 years thing makes me feel a little old today, but um, I'm sure we'll be able to get through that. But that definitely want to um, add to Nicole and welcome everybody to our session today. Definitely looking forward to hearing some more from Rockton Software here a little bit. But before we do that, just want to kind of update everyone on some announcements that Microsoft has come up with and has provided to us here over the last several weeks. Um, I'll give a little bit of a history here. So about two years ago, about this time, actually during Community Summit, which for some of you, you may be going. It's coming up next week in San Antonio. But two years ago, uh, Microsoft made some announcements from the stage related to their desire for to really educate, I guess, to let know the GP community that of their desire for individuals to start thinking about their cloud journey and where they were going. Because there was this potential that they were beginning to, I guess, um, communicate that um, GP you know, was reaching its end of life at some point in the future and that, that people started needing to think about that journey. And certainly there was a lot of discussion at that point in time. At that time, the life cycle that we're gonna review just here in a moment indicated that Microsoft was planning to support a GP through 2028 and beyond. And um, Microsoft's recent announcements has clarified what beyond means. So we're going to uh, take a look at that um, today. So. What you're seeing here on the screen is the uh, latest and greatest update by Microsoft um, to their fixed and modern life cycle. I'll just kind of walk us through this a little bit um, this morning um, or afternoon, depending upon where you are. But the first uh, kind of four rows there are referring to prior versions of GP that um, either uh, have 
been fully not supported for several years or mainstream support has ended. So you can see there G GP 2018 and 2818 R2, that, that fourth row there, mainstream support ended in January of 2023. And then uh, extended support is coming up here to be uh, to end it at some point if you're on extended support. Um, what we're going to be talking about primarily is this last row here um, that you can see under modern life cycle. And that represents the uh, life cycle for those clients who are on GP version 18, uh, versions one through, I believe the latest version is seven uh, of GP. Before I do kind of uh, reference this as you're kind of taking this all in, I do want to indicate that if you are, are on an unsupported version of GP, even given the life cycle that we're going to be talking about here for those that are on more current versions, it is important for us to have some conversations with you about that because it's possible that we can continue to extend your use of GP by getting you upgraded or looking at perhaps even hosting your GP environment uh, for you and if you're if you're on your own on-premise server. So that's still a conversation you may want to have with us no matter where you are on this uh, with these life cycles I'm showing here. So obviously you can see here on the bottom right hand corner, uh, Microsoft has basically told us what beyond means. And that um, as it stands today is that in um, September of 2029, so five years from now, they are um, communicating the end of product support, uh, product enhancements, regulatory updates, things of that nature are gonna happen in September of 2029. And then in April of 2031, they will stop all security updates to the solution. Um, and so that's what they have announced. And uh, we're expecting to hear more from them uh, at the Community Summit event this next week related to this. But um, as a partner, we found out about this when they announced it to the world. So we found out about it when you did and, um, and ready definitely to discuss, continue discussions about uh, where we go from here. And we've been doing this for the over the last couple of years. Um, we've had several sessions of webinars and things of that nature you may have attended about the cloud journey and how we as LBMC can help support you on that journey. So um, we don't want to take up too much time from, from our Rockton software, but just this is some of the uh, detail related to uh, the modern life cycle policy and nothing about this the description they've listed here of things that will happen over the last five years has changed from their original announcement two years ago, except for the dates you see there in the third, the third paragraph. So in terms of what they're planning to do over the next five years, they're still going to be providing hot fixes, uh, tax updates, um, any re relevant re regulatory updates that need to occur. They're also going to be continue to make changes in usability and reliability to address customer issues. So all those things will remain the same as they have been the last couple of years. I believe if I'm not mistaken, there's three um, GP updates a year that are released in June and October and December uh, when these things come out. And as I mentioned before, I think the current version is uh, GP 18.7. Um, so that is the details, as I mentioned, didn't really change. Um, as far as the tax updates and relevant regulatory updates, we can talk more about that during the Q&A. These are things typically that would deal with things like fixed at asset depreciation rates, form changes that are required at year end, such as 1099s and W-2s and things of that nature, payroll taxes. Um, so things of that nature would kind of be included in those uh, categories. <clears throat> So um, we're probably, I'm probably not going to be able to get through all these questions because we're going to only have about 10 or 15 minutes here at the beginning, but I can certainly uh, will hope to be able to address all of these and maybe others that you may have um, at the end of our session today. But uh, I want to get a, a few of these answered um, right off the bat that you may be having. So first question I have here is, will Dynamics GP stop working on September 30th, 2029 when support ends or on April 30th, uh, 2031 when security updates end? So technically the answer there is no. Um, the products are just not gonna turn off on those dates. Um, they'll continue to run as they do today for a period of time. Um, uh, Microsoft support is gonna obviously end, which they've announced that is gonna end, um, which means that we would not be able to reach out. In that fact, that was one of the things in the fine print there about this is that technical support would, would no longer be available. Um, as your support partner, we don't always you know, and on an infrequent basis, reach out for technical support for most of the, the needs you have. We're able to do those, support those without any assistance from Microsoft. 
but there are some things that we don't have control of that Microsoft controls that we do have to do technical support requests for. If there's bugs or issues that come up that, that cause our clients problems, then we typically will work with Microsoft to try to solve those. Um, but obviously it is significant that Microsoft support will be going away, but the, pro the products you have would continue to work um, uh, as they had before. That being said, there are gonna be increased risk of things that could occur um, when we're no longer receiving updates. Um, part of the updates that Microsoft makes are also infrastructure related in terms of the operating systems and the versions of SQL that are supported. So as Microsoft continues to change or enhance the solutions that maybe are supporting your uh, GP product, there could be unforeseen consequences or impact um, to your use of GP as a result of those things. And we would not have necessarily have mechanisms to, um, to help with those types of activities. Um, and obviously the probably the other one that's important is the uh, in the 2031 with the security updates. Once those go away, it's certainly given our world today and the security um, world that we live in um, and the issues we have with ransomware and all these other kind of things, that's certainly a, um, a concern, right? If they're not updating GP or, and the systems around those to, um, to, to handle security things that are coming up and keep that current, that could be increased risk for you as a company. The, um, the second question here, um, and we can we can tie into that more as we talk um, individually or one-on-one, -on -one, um, uh, and we'll talk more about what the next steps are here a little bit later. The next one is, do I need to continue to pay for my Dynamics GP annual maintenance plan? Um, the answer is yes. Um, for a few reasons, if you're currently on a maintenance plan, we would recommend that you maintain your maintenance plan for several reasons. Um, obviously, what we just talked about relative to the updates that Microsoft is still providing, you would want to make sure you take advantage of those and that you do stay on a current version of GP in order to get those security updates, in order to get those um, use updates and, and hot fixes that are fixing issues that are still coming up over this five-year period of time. We'd want to make sure you're able to take advantage of that so there's no downtime or issues your company runs into. Um, we also would, you would also want to uh, maintain that because um, as an existing client, if you want to add additional users or, or purchase a, a GP module, you have been grandfathered in to continue to do that. Um, actually, in April, I think here of 2026, um, no, um, they were not allowed partners to sell any new, net new software, but for existing clients, you can continue to buy users and modules um, as long as you maintain your maintenance. The other thing I was going to mention, and we'll talk more about this as we look towards the future, is that there's also discounts that Microsoft uh, and promotions that Microsoft offers for their GP clients to move to the cloud to products such as the Business Central product, uh, Dynamics Business Central product, that in order for you to take advantage of those discounts, those promotions, you have to be on a current maintenance plan uh, for Microsoft. So those are some things to, uh, to keep in mind. I think I'm about up with um, my time at the moment, but we will hope to get to these other questions at the end of our time today. And this will all give you, also give you some time to think about the questions you might have. If you will go ahead and submit those, um, then we'll be able to take a look at those and make sure we prioritize those and, and try to get to as many of those as we can at the end of our conversation. So I'm gonna turn it over to Margaret Bolding, who is our line of business manager for our um, Dynamics GP practice, and she's gonna introduce our guest, Margaret. Welcome, and we are so glad to have you on our October Office Hours webinar. We're glad that you're here, and we are excited to show you some of the Rockton software tools. Our webinar today will be led by Blake Rockwell, and as we go through the webinar, you're welcome to ask questions in the chat, and we will also provide time at the end of the webinar for more questions and answers. Rockton Software is an innovative company working with Dynamics GP since 1999 to develop and implement pricing and operational products to improve customers' lives by making their work simpler and easier. And we've had the product, I'm sorry, we've had the privilege to work with Rockton since they began in 1999 also. And they have been a great partner to us over the years as they've taken fantastic care of our clients as well as our team. And now I'll turn it over to Blake. 
Thank you, Margaret. <clears throat> hey, all. Uh, my name is Blake. Thanks for the introduction. Um, but yeah, I'm the sales guy here at Rockton. So I handle all the uh, demos. So um, anything you might have uh, customer facing, you'll likely talk to me first. Um, but I'm really excited today to show you um, some of our core uh, solutions. Um, like um, was previously mentioned, we've been in the space since 1999. So we've got over 25 years experience helping you work simpler and easier. And uh, today we're going to take a look at how we can do that. So let me go ahead and share my screen here. Make sure that everyone can uh, see my screen okay. Um, but yeah, right now you should be looking at Microsoft Dynamics GP. Um, feel free to interrupt me if you cannot see my screen. Um, but uh, right now at the top, you'll see we have five colorful R's. These little hey, R logos. Hey, Blake, one second. It looks like there's a bar maybe at the top of your screen. If you could move that out of the way, but it's your navigation bar for the webinar. A bar at the top of my screen. Interesting. I don't see that. Let's take um, one at the bottom and on the left, on the right. Oh. Let me and try stopping and sharing again. Tell me if it goes away. Okay. Screen share. How is that? Oh, I see much. what you're talking about, the, the layout still being there. Is the layout disappears, it's still there. It's, it's still there. Still there. That is really annoying. Let me see if I can just minimize everything. And I guess we kind of, can we turn off the captions? That might help. And then this, I guess I can, I don't know, hide video panel. Okay, did that work? How's that? Is that better? It got rid of one big one that was on the right. The ones at the top and bottom are still there. Yeah, the bottom here is probably the um, captions. Mm -hmm. So I'll just try to drag this out. And then this, I don't think this like will go away. This is the webinar thing. Um, so hopefully that worked. Is, is that better? Yeah, well, there's one right in the middle. There, there it goes. goes. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So hopefully that's good enough for now. Sorry. Thanks, guys. I apologize for the technical difficulties. Um, but yeah, right now we should be seeing my uh, screen here. This is Dynamics GP. Um, at the top of the screen here, we have uh, five colorful R's. These are all our Rockton uh, products, um, and those are a shortcut. So most of the setup and so on will be handled up here. Um, but I'm really excited to show you um, these. So let's hop in. Um, this first one we're going to start with right here is this blue R right here. This is Smart Fill by far our easiest um, and most popular tool. SmartFill is effectively our Google style search tool for GP. It's gonna make finding really anything you're looking for super, super fast and easy. Um, so let's go ahead and look at, for example, um, our uh, items. Oops, that is the wrong one. We wanna to go to our item card. So anywhere in GP where you see this lookup glass, you may have clicked on this lookup glass before. Um, you got to go and look up those records. The searching in GP by default is not um, the most intuitive. Um, so the great thing about SmartFill is we will allow you um, to type in pretty much anything as long as it's a semi-close match to what you're looking for. SmartFill is going to go to work in the background and try to find what it thinks you're looking for. So in this example, um, generally you have to know the exact item number or go in the lookup and type in those item numbers and find that item. Here we just type in what we know. Um, for example, I'm going to type in green. And this should find any item that um, is green. Um, and there it is. All we do is we hit tab to invoke smart fill. We get this make a selection window. It's going to pop up. Right now, we have it set up to search on the item number, item description, and item short name. If any of these um, fields uh, contain the word green, um, then that is going to go ahead and show up here. As you can see, we have four green items, a green phone, a green cord, a green cover, and a green hand assembly. Then we can just make our selection from there. If there was a bigger list of maybe you have a hundred green items or more, then we can go ahead and use this column search, which is like a secondary search to further down that criteria. For example, I'll type in phone. And now when I hit tab, it's gonna go ahead and look for everything that contains green and also contains phone. So obviously the green phone um, contains green and phone, but then you'll see over here, the green cover also contains phone in the item short name. So here's how we're searching green over here in the description and then cover in the short name. And it's combining those to find what it thinks we're looking for. So if we're looking for that green cover, we double click, it pulls in just like uh, magic. So this works everywhere in GP where that uh, lookup glass is. So it's gonna work in your um, sales order processing. Um, so go ahead and make your orders. Um, looking at accounts is a good one. Um, I have a bunch of account names. I'm not in the mood to memorize a thousand accounts. Um, so if we go over to our account card here, 
we just, again, type in what we know. If I want to find my cash accounts, I don't have to memorize a thousand account numbers. I just type in cash and I hit tab. And as soon as I do that, that make a selection window is going to pop up and there's all my cash accounts. <clears throat> I want to find my petty cash account. So again, we'll use that petty uh, in the column search, hit tab. There's only one petty cash. The cool thing too about SmartFill is that make a selection window is not always going to appear in the case that you only have one match. If it, there's only one match, it's just going to automatically fill in. For example, there's actually only one account that contains Petty. Um, that's my Petty Cash account. So if I type Petty right here in the account field, I gotta spell it right, Petty, not P, hit tab, it fills in right away, just like that. So I don't actually have to make a selection. Um, and this allows data entry to be very fast because um, you can just hit tab and just, it's gonna fill in and you're just gonna keep on going. Um, also with the account number. Um, so type in 1130. If you do happen to have your account numbers memorized, there's only one um, account that contains 1130. That's my cash, uh, petty cash account. Hit tab, that'll fill in. So it works like magic. That is um, SmartFill. Pretty awesome. Um, very handy. If there's one product that um, is going to speed up a lot of what you're doing. Uh, everyone is going to find useful. It's probably going to be SmartFill. Um, so yeah, that is all I had to show there, really. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to show. Um, ask me in the box, and I'll circle around to questions at the end here. Um, but we're going to go ahead and move on to the next of the five products I want to show today. And we're going to be taking a look at GP Toolbox. GP Toolbox is this little red R. Toolbox is a collection of 27 tools that will help you work simpler and easier inside of Dynamics GP. So um, there's really something here for everyone. Um, down here, we're going to uh, hit this drop down and go to the system settings. This is where many of the tools and setups um, will be, though there are uh, a couple tools that are um, on that drop down on their own. Um, but yeah, with 27 tools included at one price, there's certainly something for everyone. You can see we have um, security-related tools, administration-related tools, business processes, user experience, and finally, widgets. I obviously don't have time to show you 27 tools here. Um, we do have little demo videos on our Rockton YouTube uh, video. If there's any uh, tool here I don't demo that you want to check out, also feel free to reach out to LBMC. They'll be sure to put you in touch with me um, and so we can set up a demo or I can show you some of these tools. Um, and of course, if there's anything you like to see here, um, we do do free trials as well. Um, so all of those are options for you. Um, but I'm going to show you some of our most popular tools. By far the most popular tool inside of um, GP Toolbox is Inactivity Timeout. Inactivity Timeout um, is a very powerful tool. It allows a workstation to be gracefully logged out of GP after a predefined period of inactivity, which will free up that user's GP license. So if you're one of those um, people where you are constantly rubbing up against that full user count and you don't want to purchase more expensive GP user seats, well, you can just buy GP Toolbox, enable an activity timeout, and we'll log out those users after they're inactive. So right here in the setup, you can see after a default minute um, of inactive, it says default minutes of inactive before timing out. Um, so I have that set to 30 default minutes. Um, so any user that is inactive, i.e. not working or moving the cursor and saving work, um, after 30 minutes, they're going to be logged out. In the case that they're in the middle of entering a transaction, they haven't saved that work. It's not going to just cancel out and delete all that unsaved work. There's just going to be a pop-up that pops up. I'm letting them know to save their work and that they're being logged out. The admin will also get a notification so that they can either message that person or walk over their desk if they're in an office and let them know. Um, we can also have special um, user groups where you can create these user groups, custom, customize them and throw whatever users you want. So I made an admin group. I put a couple of users in there. And then I selected excluded. So in this case, anyone in this user group admin, um, they are not going to be uh, timed out, which is in this case, these two users. So you can make some user groups um, and put whatever users you want in there, give them an intuitive name, and then we can exclude them or uh, have them uh, included on a different interval. Um, in that case, we have over here, we have accounts payable. All of our accounts payables are included. They'll still time out, um, but it's on a different interval. They'll time out after 15 minutes instead of 30 minutes in this case. So yeah, it's pretty simple and easy. All you gotta do is enable it and set a time frame, and then choose what groups you don't want um, to be included or have on a different schedule. Awesome, and at that point, you're gonna be freeing up, freeing up those licenses. If you're rubbing up against that user count, um, you will know more, hopefully, unless everyone's working at the same time, of course. So that's inactivity timeout. <clears throat> we also have um, several other tools, including um, security manager, Security Manager is one of those tools where we'll enable it and disable it down here. By the way, let me show you that enable and disable. If there's a tool here that you want to use, you'll see that some of these have check marks and some of them have X's. Um, the check marks means it's enabled. The um, cancel means it's not enabled. 
So in this case, we want to enable tool, this uh, this cancel. We just click it once and it becomes a check. Now that tool is enabled. Click it one more time and it's disabled. So enabling and disabling a tool is as easy as flicking on and off a light switch. Just a click of a button. Um, right now, security manager is enabled. So let's pull up the security manager uh, drop down here. Let it go ahead and load all that good security data. And here it is. So security manager is a much more intuitive way to view, manage, and report on our security. As you can see, we've got a bunch of yeses and nos in this square. Um, and then over here, we have our uh, users. And so across the top, we have our users. Uh, down here, we have our security roles. We can see who is what. Um, in this case, we can see that um, SA is not an aud um, auditor admin, um, but Harry is an auditor admin. If we want to change uh, security here, we can just right click yes to no, um, and that'll change security. Um, and then we can also just uh, export here to Excel and re-import it later if that's easier for you. Um, but really the highlight here is that um, you can view all of your users and all of the security rules roles in one um, intuitive interface. Whereas by default in GP, it's uh, by role or by user one at a time and you have to click through. So it's just a lot easier to manage when you can see everything in this nice grid layout. We can also view it by roles, roles and tasks or roles, tasks and details. Um, it just takes a little bit of time to populate that last one. Um, so I'm not going to load it right now, but um, just depending on how much insight you want into here. Um, but yeah, that's security manager. Coming back to the system settings. Take a look at system lockout. System lockout um, will actually lock out your system. So it'll make it impossible to log into your GP while that lockout is enabled. You can set it on a schedule or a time frame. So have a date time frame if there was like some scheduled maintenance. Um, you can also have a recurring scheduled lockouts. For example, um, I've had it set up right here to, um, from 6 p.m. Friday to 5 a.m. Monday. Um, so no one's staying late working on the weekend. Um, and you know, you can't, no one can get into GP over the weekend. So if like a janitor's in your office on the weekend or something, they couldn't come and force their way into the GP system. Um, they're going to be locked out. They're not able to get in. Similar to the um, inactivity timeout, you can have custom user groups and exclude them or include them on a unique schedule. That's system lockout. Take a look at um, mentor and inspector next. Mentor and inspector work hand in hand. They're um, picked up down here in this window. You'll see mentor right here, inspector right here. We'll start with mentor. Mentor is our menu locator. It's really handy. It's kind of like smart fill, but for GP toolbox. Um, it just allows us to find what we're looking for, but with windows and stuff we're looking for in GP. It also allows us to set up security over here, which is a really great highlight as well. So let me go ahead and type in, um, for example, we have a reset batch tools um, inside of GP toolbox. It's one of the 27 tools. If you have a stuck uh, batch, then we're able to run that uh, SQL proc to free up that um, batch um, automatically. So you don't have to go in the back end and do that. Just an annoying process. It's just right here to do. So as you can see, I type in reset batch, I hit tab. Mentor goes to look, locating those menus for me. It pulls up a series of all these menus that it thinks I'm looking for. As you can see, these are not exact matches. Um, it's just going to find what it thinks I'm looking for. So a lot of these have batch or reset or something to do with that um, that sort of thing. But right here, we do have reset batches. Uh, it was almost a perfect match. Right here, we can see the path to get there. So now I know that reset batches is under tools, routines, toolbox, reset batches. So if I want to navigate there, but much more easily, I can just double click right here. Now we have our batches. So if there are any stuck batches right here, um, we could have them here and then click and reset and free them up. We can also do security right from uh, this window. Um, so in this case, we have this reset batch window. So go ahead and the security. Let's go ahead and find a user. How about Harry? So the reset batch window is viewable to these roles. And um, these are the roles um, that can see that window reset batches, all of these roles listed in this box, about 20 of them. Um, and the check marks are one roles that Harry has access to, and the stop signs are ones that Harry does not have access to. In this case, um, the uh, Harry has access to the accounting manager, AP clerk, and the bookkeeper, and all of those are giving him access to the reset batch window. So if I don't want him to have access there, I simply just have to click here, and that will... Uh, uh, that's going to redo my uh, security, but um, that's going to change his role now. Now he's not a bookkeeper. If I want to make him a bookkeeper again, just click it again. And now he's a bookkeeper. 
So we can do security setup right here inside of the mentor uh, window. So it's gonna be very easy to just go in here, find a window. You wanna know, hey, who has access to this window? Just find their user, look at their roles, and you're gonna be able to see who can look at that uh, window and uh, you can change it if that's if it's something you don't want. So um, in this case, if you wanna add a role or take away a role, just do it right here. Super simple and easy. So um, menu locator or mentor uh, works side and side with um, inspector. Let me pull up inspector here. You can also hit control alt I to get this inspector's shortcut. But inspector is our helpful gadget for finding um, all the detailed technical information um, inside of GP. It's gonna tell us um, the table field info, um, all sorts of info. So let me pull up, uh, for example, like account. As soon as you pull up a window, mentor pops in next to it, giving you all that table info. You can click through the fields if I switch this from all tables to just tables containing this field, as I click through this fields, you can see how the tables um, displayed change. So for example, the description um, is a part of the account mask master and it's in this table. The alias um, category is uh, in the GL00102, whereas this is the 100. Um, so just gonna give you all that table and also that window field um, info. So you'll always be able to find what you're looking for and um, it'll give you great insight into not only what's inside of GP, but also your third-party dexterity-based products. Um, Inspector will just give you a lot of info. Um, it's gonna be really helpful too for the auditor setup. Um, later in this webinar, I'm gonna get into our auditing pro um, product auditor and it's a very simple one to use just um, to set up your audits. You have to know um, the table name. And so a great way to know the table name is to use Inspector and look it up and then it's right here. All you gotta know is uh, that table name to go set up those audits. So. One way that our Rockton products kind of work hand in hand together. So yeah, that's Inspector and Mentor. We looked at Security Manager. Um, I think I kind of touched on most of the major ones I want to show you. Um, but yeah, we do have 27 um, tools here. I don't have time to show you all of them. Um, I'll give you one more bonus though uh, before we move on to the next tool. So if there's some tool you want to uh, check out, um, just be sure to reach out to LBMC or Rockton and we're happy to set that up. Um, we'll show you uh, any tool you want to see. Happy to do a personalized demo. So here's period open close. Um, for anyone who has multiple companies inside of GP, you're definitely gonna wanna pay attention to this. This is gonna save you a lot of headaches, especially as we reach year end. Um, but you know who here has spent a lot of time managing fiscal years, um, generating fiscal periods, closing and opening periods. Uh, it's a lot of work, right? So with period open close, um, all of our companies theoretically would be listed right here in the company dropdown. I only have one company, I'm just using Fabricam sample data. Um, but if I had multiple companies, they'd all be listed here. Now check this out. If I click this box, this box says mark all companies. Select that to mark all companies. Then I'm gonna go down here in this box. I'm gonna say generate. I'm gonna click next fiscal year. With three clicks of the button, we've just generated uh, the next fiscal year for all of our companies at the same time, whether that was a hundred or 10. We just did that all at once and three clicks of the button. Pretty awesome. Furthermore, let me hop into some other, uh, so I don't change my, ruin my data here. Let me go to an old fiscal period. Um, but we can also manage um, our fiscal periods right in here. So if we want to, you know, close sales for period five, just double click. Want to reopen it? Double click it again. Um, same with generating, open all series, close all series. All of that is down here. So much more intuitive way to manage your fiscal periods. And of course, generating uh, the next fiscal year um, for multiple companies at the same time. Pretty awesome. So that is period open close. Again, part of GP toolbox, one of the 27 tools there. Um, there's a couple more tools here. Feel free to kind of look at my screen if you want to read what else is included here. I don't have a lot of time to touch on all of this. Um, but if anything jumps out of you, just feel free to leave it in the chat box or reach out and we'll talk about it at the end. All right, uh, I'll try to keep on time here. So we're gonna move on to Auditor. Um, Auditor is our auditing solution um, at a high level. That means it's going to track ads deletes and changes inside of GP. Um, so anytime data or records are being added, you create a new customer, you delete a customer, um, you change the vendor tech name, we'll track that type of stuff. Um, and it can be configured anywhere you'd like in um, GP. I'm not gonna go too much into the setup. I kind of talked about it a little bit with GP Toolbox, but as long as you can find the table where that field is located, you're gonna be able to set up an audit. We can audit your third-party products if they're dexterity-based, and we can also do the SQL audit so we can track in the back end in case changes are happening in the back end, we'll capture those as well. So let's just hop into an example so you can see how simple and easy it works once you got it set up. I'll hop over to purchasing. I've got a um, audit set up on my vendor card. We have two types of audits. 
um, a normal audit, which is going to kind of silently audit in the background. Then we also have a audit with a note. The audit with a note is going to um, have a note pop up happen when the user changes that field um, as the admin requires them to tell them why they're changing that field. Um, so when you do the audit with a note, the end user is likely going to know they're being audited just because, you know, they're getting that pop up when they make that change. Whereas that silent audit where there's no note, the end user is not getting a pop up. So they're likely not going to know they're being audited. Um, so it's kind of just one of those options of do you want the end user to know they're being audited or not? And how important is it for you then to put in a reason for the audit? Um, but yeah, let's hop into um, our vendor example here. Type in ACE. I'm going to hit tab, invoke smart fill here. Uh, smart fill pulls up our ACE travel company. We can see we have um, all this detail here. Um, I have an audit set up on the short name, and then I have an audit with a note set up on the check name. So if I change either the short name or check name, both of those should be captured in the smart list. And if I change the check name, a pop-up should happen, letting me know, um, asking me why I did that, and I'll have to tell them why I do that. So the short name will change a travel um, company to a travel, uh, oops, that might've captured it. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I did, I changed it to a travel. Um, so that, that, that was the audit, there you go. Change it to a travel and I hit save too quickly. And now that change is captured. Now, John Smith, we're gonna change to John Johnson. And this is the audit with a note. We'll hit save. And now, instead of nothing happening, uh, this window pops up saying, Hey, why are you making that change? So I'll just say it's for a demo. Apply that note to the displayed change, which is this change right here. Oops, not to the mark. Uh, you can mark the changes too if there's multiple changes. So I accidentally hit the tall changes marked below instead of the displayed change. I'll just say the displayed change. And now that note was tied to that change. Um, and that's business as usual. And I'm just gonna do that example one more time to the non um, note one, just so uh, I kind of clicked quickly there. Um, a travel co, I'll change it to. As soon as you hit save, you'll see pretty much no pop-up happens. It's just like magic. The record just goes away. It doesn't really look like you're being audited, right? But all those changes were captured. Um, so we're going to pull up the smart list now. Go to Fabricam, smart list. And right here, when you install auditor, you'll get your own auditor folder. We'll have our security audits um, separated. So any security changes um, will be captured here. Um, like I think today I changed the security role, right? Yeah, I made Harry a bookkeeper and then not a bookkeeper. So there's that no to yes, yes to no um, security change. And here's our normal audit log. Um, and here's the audits from today. Um, it even captured uh, the security manager stuff. Um, but yeah, here we go. We have the uh, 1035. So there's these ones are the change that happened. So here's that non-note um, change that happened at 1036 so one minute ago. Here's what that detail kind of looks like in that uh, smart list. So we can see the user that made the change, the time and date it happened, the workstation used, the event ID, the company, the audit type that it was a table audit rather than a SQL table audit or a window audit, <clears throat> that it was an edit, which is changing data rather than adding data or deleting data, like adding a record. This is the audit group, what I've named it. That was part of my setup. And then down here is all that good detail. So the short name, um, the old value, the new value, the record key, all of that stuff is all there. We can drill onto that record key, et cetera. So that is um, the normal audit. And then the audit with a note is going to be this one. You can see this note uh, column is populated, but it looks exactly the same. Gives you all that good info that who, what, where, when, why. Um, but of course, down here, we have the note that it was for a demo. Pretty handy. Um, yeah, so, um, that is at a high level auditor right there. Um, we have a couple other bonus features, including e-signature, um, e-signature is going to allow us to put a password on a uh, field so that another user has to sign off and approve that change. Um, so I have an example set up on my pay code. If someone wants to um, change someone's salary or their pay code and give them a raise, then another user, not S if I'm logged in as SA to make the change it has to be another user logged in. Um, the same, even if you're an admin, you can't approve your own change. Um, it's a forced check and balance there, but we can uh, go ahead and make that change. That other user approves it, and then that change happens. So that's e-signature. Um, and then we also have um, the separation of duties. So we'll uh, publish a report. You can import your security tasks manually um, or um, by just importing the roles and tasks. Um, and then you can make them exclusive of each other. And then we'll print off a report that uh, just displays all the users um, and all of their exclusions. 
Um, and then as far as examples, I want to show you, um, the last thing I want to show you from the auditor side is going to be um, over here on the inquiry side. Um, we have auditor, the JVR, and the transaction lifecycle. These are going to show you journal entries, including who created, approved, and posted them. Um, so very great to give you insight um, in case you have violations you want to see. Um, you can sort it also by who created, approved, and posted by, by user, sort it by a date range. And of course, up here at the top, um, you can click like this, for example, created by equals posted by. Hit redisplay. Now we uh, further that down to just six journal entries where SA was the creator and the poster. Um, so these are probably some violations. Those are some journal vouchers you might want to go uh, look at, right? Um, same thing on that other side, transaction, or sorry, inquiry, auditor, uh, transaction lifecycle. It's going to be the same sort of stuff, just who uh, approved, created, and posted um, journal entries. Um, but it's going to be on your other modules that weren't included on the JVR, um, Journal Voucher Roadmap, uh, including your sales order processing, receivables management, uh, purchase order processing, payables management. So yeah, redisplay that, for example. Got a bunch of uh, sales orders here. Let's see where I created and posted the same. In this case, 200, where SA created and posted an invoice. Probably some violations there, right? So we can go ahead and further that uh, journal uh, entry down. And now we can just go and look at only these entries and it's gonna save us a lot of time, right? Cause it's already been um, kind of some of that sorting and work has been done for us. So yeah, um, that was auditor at a high level, we'll do ads, deletes and changes anywhere in GP and your third-party products, as long as they're dexterity based. Um, we can also do the SQL backend um, tracking. Um, we have the e-sign, have a password on a field so that not any user can just go in and change it. And then we also have that transaction life cycle and that JVR. So we're able to um, see uh, who created, approved, and posted journal entries. So uh, we're going to move on to the next product. Um, we're kind of getting low on time, so I'm not going to go super deep into them. But the next two products we're going to talk about are OmniPrice. Um, we actually have two pricing solutions. Our another pricing solution, Rockton Pricing Management, um, is kind of a heavier version. This is kind of like our light pricing solution. So if you have pricing, come talk to me. I'm sure we have something that's going to help you. Um, but I'll go ahead and just show you OmniPrice, which is kind of our more simple um, for, you know, people who just want a cheap, easy to use, easy to set up. Um, you don't have super complicated uh, pricing uh, setups, then just use OmniPrice, not a big deal. But it works like magic in our sales transaction entry. We'll pull up our um, customer, hit, uh, type it in AA, -A, and then hit tab, it found Aaron Fitz. That's SmartFill going to work. Come over here. I don't know my item numbers. I'm just gonna type in green. Smartville is gonna go to work when I hit tab. It's gonna find my green items. Uh, I'm gonna go try to buy a green uh, phone. And now as soon as we pop over, you can see that, that that unit price populated. It was originally 120, but it populates now as 101. Why did this special price come in for Aaron Fitz? Oh, well, it's because OmniPrice kicked in here. So we can go ahead and look over here and we can uh, see the contract, customer pricing, see contract. What contract price applied? Oh. This contract applied, and that's why I got this price. We can look at that contract, dig into that contract, and we can see all this setup. It might look very <laughs> scary if you haven't seen this setup before, but I'll try to make it very simple here. We have a series of filters, which can be added here, whether we want this contract to apply to all customers, all items, all dates, or additional filters. In this case, it's for all of those. Um, just we've only filtered customers, only our A-list customers, of which Aaron Fitz is one. And then down here in our item grid, we've just made a, a hierarchy of just some items and some markups. If there's no item number, then this markup applies to everything. So here's a percent markup of 30 that applies to all items. And then down here, since item numbers are specified on these two rows, um, that means that those markups or discounts are item specific. So in this case, only the green phone is a 15% discount and only that 128 gigabyte SD RAM has a 25% additional markup. So that's all it really is. Um, these contracts, it's all it's saying. So effectively when this came in, it's gonna take what's the price of the green phone, mark it up 30%, and then because Aaron Fitz is an A-list customer, give him a 15% discount. And that final price right there is 101.96. So OmniPrice um, is gonna get you the right price for the right customer at the right time. So yeah, if you need pricing, you want your pricing automated, um, we'll help you with that. Oh, I hit my credit limit. All right, so that's OmniPrice. Um, pretty simple, we'll just handle your uh, unit pricing. Next, we have Dynamic Report Manager. This is gonna be the last thing I'll show you. Um, it's really just not, um, there's not like a huge uh, um, 
amount of stuff going on with dynamic report manager, it's effectively, I'm just going to give you a couple things that are going to be a big bonus. The main one is going to be, you don't have to buy a crystal report license in order to use crystal reports. We're going to allow you to run and do crystal reports in GP, no need for that license. Um, but we support all report types, virtually all, all. So crystal reports, SSRI, report writer, um, of course, normal, um, like doc, Excel type stuff. Um, all that's going to be supported. We can go ahead and run these reports and print them right here in GP. Um, so any of those reports we can have for automatically run. So if you want, you know, some sales invoice, um, get your nice report, run it over here on the print list, put in your parameter of, oh, this customer and this uh, this invoice, and then we'll print a nice looking document for you, right? Super nice. Put your logo on there. It'll look great. One of the most powerful things though, too, about um, other than the not having to buy a crystal report license is the launch points. The launch points allow us to do several things such as um, emailing invoices um, directly from uh, an invoice, you know, so going from an invoice, just emailing that out um, from the sales order entry. Um, we can print an invoice from the sales order entry um, line. So on the window save, for example, um, we can print that uh, invoice and then we can send it out to our customer. We can also do schedule launches so we can have reports run. So if you're running reports every single day, we can have those run automatically. For example, here's a nightly report. I have it set up to run every single day at 11 p.m. or Monday through Friday at least. Um, and that just allows me so I don't have to go in there and manually click and start these reports to run, right? So just some automating of processes um, and some kind of enhancement when it comes to report management. Um, so just a way to view and manage your reports. All of your reports of all report types can come into here. We can print them off. Um, and then we can manage our launch points, um, including emailing invoices right from GP. So if you want to email an invoice, we can do that. If you want to um, schedule reports to run in the background, we can do that. Um, yeah, so that's, if you have report needs, Dynamics Report Manager can likely help you. So yeah, um, just to recap um, everything you just looked at today, um, we first took a look at SmartFill. SmartFill is our Google style search tool. Helps you find data really fast inside of GP. Anywhere where that look up, gla look up glass is, you never have to click it again. Just type in what you know, hit tab, SmartFill is going to find it. We also took a look at GP Toolbox. That's our collection of 27 tools that are going to help you work simpler and easier. Um, one of the main highlights there is definitely inactivity timeout, which is going to free up that license um, of that user that is inactive, freeing up your user count so you don't have to buy expensive GP licenses. Um, you can just keep your user count as, you know, to as many people as working on, in there at once. We took a look at Auditor. Auditor is our um, uh, our auditing solution. It allows you to track ads, deletes, and changes, which we saw. Um, it also gives us a couple other options, such as that e-sign, putting a password on a field so that only approved users can change it. Um, and then also um, that journal voucher roadmap and transaction lifecycle, just seeing who, what, where, when, why of who created those journal entries. Um, and then uh, separation of duties groups. So I'm um, just being able to import those roles and seeing the conflicts report there and how your security is set up and how it needs to be changed. Took a look at that Omni price and I kind of briefly mentioned Rockton pricing management, but if you need pricing, if you want that unit, uh, you want that unit price field populated um, with any rule you can imagine, uh, Rockton has got a solution for you. Um, we rare, I don't think, man, it's been over a year since I've run into something we couldn't handle. So I challenge you, come my way with a pricing solution you think couldn't be handled um, in your ERP and I would not ready to take on the challenge. And finally, we took a look at Dynamics Report Manager. Um, the highlight there really is just a great way to manage a report uh, reports. Um, it doesn't, we can not buy a crystal report license. We can just use our crystal reports right here with DRM. Um, and then we can also email reports um, and schedule reports to run. Kind of some of the highlights there. Um, so yeah, that's really all I have time for. I'm going to go ahead and hand this back over to LBMC. Thanks so much uh, for having me on. And I guess we'll do questions and whatever else at the end here. Great. Thank you, Blake, so much um, for that great presentation. Uh, we have reserved time now for Q&A, both uh, for rocked in content, but also if you've got any Dynamics GP questions. Uh, Kenneth's here to answer your your questions. So let's see if we have any. Kenneth, you want to address these other ones? Yeah, I can do that. Can you see my screen? Um, yep. All right. So I can do that, and certainly appreciate Blake and um, all that great thing, those great tools that he showed. And if you do have any questions about those, or like more information or personalized demonstration, please feel free to let us know. And I know that um, that Nicole will be giving some options for how you guys can communicate with us and reach out to us after this session today to talk about 
either the future of GP and um, your cloud journey or about Rockton. So feel free to, to reach out um, using those th that information that Nicole will be sharing. So I think we've gotten to uh, question number three here. Where will I get support for Dynamics GP until such time as I make a decision to move to the cloud? Well, that answer is certainly LBMC. We hope that that continues to be so. Um, we've been working with GP at LBMC for, I don't know, 25 years or more. Um, we plan to continue to support GP for as long as we have clients um, running GP and are not going anywhere. Um, but we've also been preparing ourselves over the last 15 years or so to be a cloud ERP financial solution provider. So about 15 years ago, we picked up a solution called Sage Intact and, um, and have been working with that product over the last um, 15 years. And we've also, for the last five or six years, been a um, have picked up Microsoft's mid-market um, cloud ERP solution called Dy Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. And um, both of these solutions have great fits across all the industries that we support uh, and serve within our Dynamics GP uh, client base. Um, we have um, today 15 people that provide support around our GP clients. And um, uh, so we obviously value and will continue to value our GP clients and want to be part of uh, the process by which you're evaluating what your future looks like as it relates to your financial solutions. And that kind of leads us to the next question, which is when do I need to start working on putting together plans for moving my ERP solution to the cloud? And so there's probably several factors to think about here. I think the first part that I kind of want to talk about is the word plan. And I think that's really um, where you need to start. Um, this decision to move to um, the cloud or to look at a replacement for GP in the long run is not purely a technology decision. It's a business decision. Um, there's many factors you need to be considering. And part of those factors you need to consider is perhaps not just replicating what you have today. There's probably been many changes to your business and to your competition in your industries that you serve and the technology world that you live in, uh, things you want to take advantage of in order to grow your business, to achieve your business objectives that are much different than they were when you first implemented GP uh, 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago. And um, those things need to be considered. And so from a company standpoint, you need to engage um, internally across your entire company relative to where you guys are from a company standpoint today and where you're wanting to go tomorrow because all those things need to play into the right solution for you in the future. And in order for us to best help you, it's important that you've done some homework and some preparation for those conversations. And so planning is important. The other uh, part of this is that um, there are certainly some realities about this announcement that Microsoft's provided that um, do introduce new risk in the future about you know, GP continuing to meet your needs, whether it's because of issues that come up as a result of them, you know, Microsoft not providing support at some point or um, other things with your business that you're not able to achieve, it is important to begin to move in this direction from a planning standpoint. So you know what this is going to look like for you and your company and what your options are and what you can select. I do want to also mention that while we do have two products that um, we support and that we um, implement for our clients, that um, even if you're considering other solutions or you need to just figure out how you're going to move forward, we can help you with that. I mean, this is what we do day in and day out with our clients is help them strategically plan. And, in, and not just around your financial and ERP solutions, but also across our other services that we provide, whether that's network engineering and um, hosting um, uh, your systems and supporting your workstations and all your other technology at your company, whether it's custom solutions or integrations we need to develop, whether it's things related to your CRM platforms or power platform type activities where you need to integrate with solutions um, outside of what you're integrating with today. These are all things that we can we can help you with as part of this strategic engagement of trying to make sure you're on the right systems going forward. Um, the other aspect of this in terms of the planning is that some of the realities are is that We've got five years um, if you are going to move off of GP to make that happen. And certainly if all of our GP clients decided to do that in the last year, we're not going to be able to have enough resources to probably support that. And so it's also important from a planning standpoint for us to engage with you and find out what your plans are as we start building our schedules and our resource plans over the next five years that we're able to meet um, the demand that our clients is going to are going to have. 
And we want to make sure that we can support all of our clients in that. So the sooner that we can plan with you and kind of look at what that look, you know, may look like over the next um, three to five years, uh, the better. These projects um, obviously vary in size in terms of migrating you from your existing solution to one of these cloud solutions will vary depending upon the level of complexity or size of your solution and the, the ultimate scope of what you're going to try to accomplish from a business standpoint. We have uh, migrated GP clients to either Sage Intact, um, well, specifically Sage Intact, and probably we've had anywhere from between four to, to five months um, on the short end of that. Um, and, and that's not just pure work on our part. That also includes the client schedule and their availability to help support those projects. And that's certainly a consideration that has to be taken into account in your planning related to a migration from one solution to another. For clients that are more larger and have more sophistication, perhaps heavy distribution, or maybe even some light manufacturing or things like that, it could be more along the lines of six to nine months or 10 months that it may take to for a migration of something like that. More complex clients could take as many as 12 to 15 months, perhaps, depending upon um, you know, what we need to do in order to support all the different things that they've built around their system over the years. So these projects can happen pretty rapidly, depending upon the size and scope of your company, and they may take a little bit more time. And so that's why it's important to plan these things out for us to be able to help you scope out what you're going to need, what that's going to look like, and then we can help put together more defined plans to help get that, you know, in working for your company. So what are the next steps? Uh, the next steps is to contact us, to let us know you're interested in a conversation about um, where you are and where you'd like to go. And uh, we would be able to, with our strategic account management team and with our other resources, with Margaret and her team and myself, we're certainly going to be willing to sit down with you and talk about what that future may look like and how we can help you get there. So I think that's all I had, Nicole, at the moment, unless we had any other questions we want to, uh, anybody has at the moment. We don't have any in the queue right now. As we mentioned, uh, you're welcome to, to reach out to us or put them in the chat. I am going to launch a poll that would indicate some interest if you want us to reach out to you. If you're interested in more information about Rockton, our partner today, we could also talk about scheduling a business process review, upgrading your version of Dynamics GP, or talking about your timeline for Journey to the Cloud. As you mentioned, we're your um, partner. We want to be the last technology partner you'll ever need. So we're here to support our clients every step of this uh, journey to the cloud. I'll leave this up for just a few more minutes, a few more seconds. Again, I want to thank you all for attending today. I want to thank our, our hosts, Kenneth and Blake. Thank you for sharing your information. We will be hosting uh, follow-up sessions, a Q&A session, uh, next on Friday, the 11th, to answer more questions about Dynamics GP. We also have our upcoming GP office hours. On November 19th, we'll do GP module closing. On December 17th, we'll do an encore performance of GP module closing, as well as a GP payroll year-end closing. So be on the lookout for those. Thank you all for attending today. Thank you for your attention and we hope you have a great day. Thanks everyone.